Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We have a function f whose domain is the set of non-negative integers. Function f satisfies the following functional equation. f of x, y is the product of f of x and f of y plus the product of f of x minus 1 and f of y minus 1. f of 0 is equal to 0. If f of x is equal to 0 for every non-negative integer x, then it satisfies this functional equation. Our interest will be the functions that are not identically equal to 0 for every x in its domain. Because of this condition, there exists a positive integer x0 such that f of x0 is not equal to 0. Let's use our functional equation set y equal to 1 and x equal to x0. The left-hand side becomes f of x0. The right-hand side becomes f of x0 times f of 1 plus f of x0 minus 1 times f of 1 minus 1, which is f of 0. And this is equal to 0. Thus, f of x0 is equal to f of x0 multiplied by f of 1. f of x0 is not equal to 0. We can multiply both sides by 1 over f of x0 to get that f of 1 is equal to 1. The next step is to leave x as is and set y equal to 2. f of 2x is equal to f of 2 times f of x plus f of 1, which is equal to 1 times f of x minus 1. So f of 2x is equal to f of 2 times f of x plus f of x minus 1. If we choose x to be equal to 2, we get that f of 4 is equal to f of 2 squared plus f of 1, which is 1. We can write f of 4x in two ways. f of 4x is f of 2x times 2. It is also equal to f of x times 4. f of 2 times 2x is exactly like f of 2x equal to f of 2 times f of x plus f of x minus 1 with x replaced by 2x. This is equal to f of 2 times f of 2x plus f of 2x minus 1. If we deal with 4x as the product of x and 4, applying the original functional equation, this is equal to f of 4 times f of x plus f of 3 times f of x minus 1. These two quantities are equal. We can move f of 2 times f of 2x to the right-hand side to obtain an expression for f of 2x minus 1. In that expression, we have f of 3. We have also f of 4, which is 1 plus the square of f of 2. Our expression for f of 2x minus 1 can be written in terms of f of 2 and f of 3. Specifically, f of 2x minus 1 is f of x plus f of x minus 1 multiplied by f of 3 minus f of 2. If f of 2 is a and f of 3 is b, then we have these two expressions for f of 2x and f of 2x minus 1. f of 2x is a f of x plus f of x minus 1 f of 2x minus 1 is equal to f of x plus b minus a f of x minus 1. f of 2x and f of 2x minus 1 are both a linear combination of f of x and f of x minus 1. We know that f of 0 is equal to 0, f of 1 is equal to 1, f of 2 is equal to a, f of 3 is equal to b, f of 4 is a squared plus 1. To obtain f of 5, use this expression with x equal to 3, f of 5 is equal to f of 3, which is b, plus b minus a, f of 2, which is a. f of 5 is equal to b plus b a minus a squared. f of 6 can be obtained from this expression, set x equal to 3, f of 6 is equal to a, times f of 3, which is b, plus f of 2, which is a. We can obtain f of 7 from here, f of 8 using that expression, and so forth. As we can see, f of x where x is a positive integer greater than or equal to 4, is in terms of a and b, f of 2 and f of 3. If we specify a and b, we obtain the full sequence. The question now is, what are the possible values of a and b? Are they constrained? And the answer is yes. We can systematically employ these two expressions to obtain f of 9, f of 10, all the way to f of 21. I will focus here on f of 9, f of 15, and f of 21. Those expressions are obtained using our friends here. But f of 9 is f of 3 times 3. f of 15 is f of 3 times 5. f of 21 is f of 3 times 7. We can obtain other expressions for these quantities using the original functional equation. f of xy is equal to f of x times f of y plus f of x minus 1, f of y minus 1. So f of 9 
which is f of 3 times 3 is equal to f of 3 times f of 3 plus f of 2 times f of 2. That's a squared plus b squared. For consistency, we must have a squared b squared equal to this expression here. f of 15 is f of 3 times 5. So it is f of 3 times f of 5. f of 3 is b. f of 5 is b plus b a minus a squared plus f of 2, which is a, times f of 4, which is a squared plus 1. f of 15 is given by that expression in terms of a and b. It is also given by that other expression, and these two must be equal. f of 21 is f of 3 times f of 7. So it is f of 3, which is b, times f of 7, which is a squared plus b squared minus a b plus 1, plus f of 2, which is a, times f of 6, which is a b plus a. These two expressions must be equal. The sequence is fully determined by A and B, but A and B must satisfy those three equations we have obtained. These are the three equations obtained on the previous page after moving everything to the left-hand side to have zero on the right-hand side. In the first equation, we can take A as a common factor from here, and we can take B as a common factor from here. This bracket is A squared plus 2A plus 1, that's A plus 1 squared, minus AB minus B, that's minus b times a plus 1. We can take a plus 1 as a common factor. Inside this bracket, we have a plus 1 minus b. Now to the second equation. We can take a as a common factor from here, b as a common factor from there. This is the third equation that is obtained using f of 21. I will use the variable c equal to a minus b. I will leave a as is, but b is replaced by a minus c. If we do this substitution, expand, then simplify, we get this equation in A and C. It turns out that this expression can be factored. Here it is after multiplying both sides by minus 1. I can take A squared as a common factor. From this, we have 2A. From this, we have minus C. And from this, we have minus C squared. From the remaining terms, taking C as a common factor, we are left with 2A minus C minus C squared, exactly like this bracket. We can factor the left-hand side here as a squared plus c times 2a minus c minus c squared. This product is equal to zero. Now we can bring b back into the picture by replacing c by a minus b. This is our third equation. It gives us two possibilities. The first one is b equal to a squared plus a. We can use this here. We have zero equal to a times a plus one times a plus one minus b, so this is minus a minus a squared, plus b times b minus 2. This is a squared plus a times a squared plus a minus 2. We can take a times a plus 1 as a common factor. It is here. It is there. From here, we have 1 minus a squared. This is 1 plus a times 1 minus a. a squared plus a minus 2 is equal to a plus 2 times a minus 1. We have 0 equal to a times a plus 1 times 1 minus a, then we have a plus 1 minus a minus 2. We get three possible solutions, 0 or minus 1 or 1. The corresponding value of b is obtained from this expression. The possible pairs are 0, 0, 1, 2, or minus 1 and 0. If we go to the second expression, if b is equal to 0, this will disappear. a is equal to minus 1, so this bracket must be equal to 0. When b is equal to 0, this bracket is a squared plus 1. This is equal to 2 when a is equal to minus 1. The second equation is violated if we use a equal to minus 1 and b equal to 0. This solution is rejected. We have these two. Let's go back here. The second possibility is that a plus b is equal to a minus b squared. Putting everything on one side and expanding, we get this expression here, which implies that b squared is equal to a plus b plus 2ab minus a squared. We can go to equation 2, and whenever we encounter b squared, we replace it by this expression. When we do so and simplify, we get one more b squared. Again, it is replaced by a plus b plus 2ab minus a squared. Some nice cancellations happen, and we end up with a plus a squared minus 2b equal to 0, which implies that 2b is equal to a plus a squared. We take this and go back to equation 1, multiply both sides by 4. We get 0 is equal to 
2 times e times e plus 1. And then the other 2 multiplies this bracket to get 2a plus 2 minus 2b. Then we have 2b between brackets 2b minus 4. We replace 2b by a squared plus a. When we do so, we get this expression. a times a plus 1 can be taken as a common factor. In this bracket, 4 goes away with minus 4. We are left with 3a minus a squared, which is a times 3 minus a. We already have the solutions with a equal to 0 and a equal to 1. a equal to minus 1 is rejected. We obtain a new solution, which is a is equal to 3. Consequently, 2b is equal to 3 plus 9. That's 12. b is equal to 6. We can check that the bare 3, 6 satisfies all our equations. Recall that once we specify a, which is f of 2, and b, which is f of 3, we fully specify the sequence. We have three solutions. Using the expressions for f of 2x and f of 2x minus 1, we obtain those three sequences. The first sequence, when a is equal to b is equal to 0, is the sequence 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, and so on. It's a three periodic sequence that looks like this. If we use this pair, the sequence we obtain is 0, 1, then 1, 2, then 2, 3, then 3, 4, then 4, 5, then 5, 6, and so on. Finally, if A is equal to 3 and B is equal to 6, we get the sequence 0, 1, 3, 6. Recall that F of 4 is equal to A squared plus 1. So the next term is 3 squared plus 1. That's 10. We can use these expressions to generate the remaining terms in the sequence. We have 15, 21, 28. Those are the triangular numbers. We have 0, we have 1, we have 1 plus 2, 1 plus 2 plus 3, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, and so on. These are our three solutions. We can write down expressions for each one of those sequences, and we can check that indeed the expressions satisfy this equation and that equation. This sequence can be written as 1 third plus 2 thirds times cosine 2 pi x minus 1 over 3, or we can write f of x as 2x squared minus x modulo 3. Note that if x is congruent to 0 mod 3, we get 0. If x is congruent to 1 mod 3, we get 2 times 1 squared, that's 2, minus 1, that's 1. And if x is congruent to 2 mod 3, we get 2 times 2 squared, that's 8. And 8 is 2 mod 3, minus 2, that's 0. So we get 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, and so on. This f of x satisfies the original functional equation and both equations here. What about the second sequence? f of x is the floor of x plus 1 divided by 2. And this will indeed generate the sequence here. It will satisfy the original functional equation and these two guys here. Finally, the triangular numbers, they have the expression 1 half times x times x plus 1. Note that for this particular solution, this f of x satisfies the original functional equation even if x is considered a real number. This is f of x times f of y. This is f of x minus 1 times f of y minus 1. If we add, we get 1 fourth xy. Between brackets, we get xy plus x plus y plus 1. And from here, we get xy minus x minus y plus 1. These guys go away. We are left with 2xy plus 2. Taking 2 as a common factor, we get 1 half xy times xy plus 1. That's f of xy. X and Y here are not necessarily non-negative integers.